Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the cradle of naval aviation, the home of the United States Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, the Blue Angels, and to America's first city, historic Pensacola. I am Commander Brian Carlo, the ship's executive officer. It is my privilege to be your master of ceremonies today. We welcome those with us in person and our friends and family as they participate in today's event via the World Wide Web. We are here today to commission the first ship to bear the name of Medal of Honor recipient, Captain Richard Miles McCool, Jr., United States Navy. To quote Captain McCool's Medal of Honor citation, as commanding officer of a landing craft support ship, during operations against enemy Japanese forces in the Ryukyu chain 10 and 11 June 1945, Sharply vigilant during hostile air raids against Allied ships on radar picket duty off Okinawa on 10 June, Lieutenant McCool aided materially in evacuating all survivors from a sinking destroyer, which had sustained mortal damage under the devastating attacks. When his own craft was attacked simultaneously by two of the enemy's suicide squadron early in the evening of 11 June, he instantly hurled the full power of his gun batteries against the plunging aircraft, shooting down the first and damaging the second before it crashed into his station in the conning tower and engulfed the immediate area in massive flames. Although suffering from shrapnel wounds and painful burns, he rallied his concussion shock crew and initiated vigorous firefighting measures and then proceeded to the rescue of several trapped in a blazing compartment subsequently carrying one man to safety despite the excruciating pain of additional severe burns. Unmindful of all personal danger, he continued his efforts without respite until aid arrived from other ships and he was evacuated. By his staunch leadership, capable direction, and indomitable determination throughout the crisis, Lieutenant McCool saved the lives of many who otherwise might have perished and contributed materially to the saving of his ship for further combat service. This crew is poised and ready to continue the proud legacy of a true American hero, Captain Richard M. McCool, Jr. Would all active duty service members, veterans, and first responders please stand? How about a round of applause? Next, I'd like to recognize all military and first responder families. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your service and your sacrifice. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to recognize all Reserve Officer Training Corps cadets and Navy League Sea cadets. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the future leaders of our great nation. Please be seated. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition that began with the commissioning of our first warship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from silent hulls to fully alive warships. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and ready to bring our ship to life. In just a few moments, Navy Band Southeast will render honors to the Honorable Matt Gates. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors, the presentation of colors, and our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests. Lieutenant Matthew Schilling, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, our ceremony chaplain. Miss Amanda Robison, our Matron of Honor. Commander Larry Friese, United States Navy, retired, our long glass presenter. Captain Randy Slaff, United States Navy, Supervisor of Shipbuilding, Gulf Coast. Captain Matthew Tardy, United States Navy, 
Amphibious Warfare Program Manager. Captain Terence Village Shashati, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, Naval Air Station, Pensacola. Captain Brian Carmichael, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Surface Group, Mid-Atlantic. Rear Admiral Don Quinn, United States Navy, retired, Chairman, USS Richard M. McCool, Jr., Commissioning Committee. Ms. Carrie Wilkinson, Executive Vice President, Huntington Ingalls Industries, and President, Ingalls Shipbuilding. Rear Admiral Thomas Anderson, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Ships. The Honorable D.C. Reeves, Mayor, City of Pensacola, Florida. General Christopher J. Mahoney, United States Marine Corps, the 37th Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps. Admiral Lisa Franchetti, United States Navy, the 33rd Chief of Naval Operations. The Honorable Carlos Del Toro, the 78th Secretary of the Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsor, Ms. Shauna McCool, escorted today by Master Chief Jerry Gonzalez, USS Richard M. McCool, Jr., Command Master Chief. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Matt Gates, United States Representative, Florida's 1st District. Escorted today by Captain Jeffrey Baker, United States Navy, USS Richard M. McCool, Jr., Commanding Officer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, honors to the Honorable Matt Gates. Platform, hand salute. <laughs> Platform. Ready? Two. Advance the colors. Retire the colors. Work. Work. 
platform. Ready? Two. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Schilling will now deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly ask you to bless us with your presence as we gather to commission this vessel of the United States Navy. We thank you for the knowledge and skill you gave to all those who contributed to the design and construction of this warship and for the many who gave of their time and resources to make this day possible. And do each of us, service members and civilians alike, with such loyalty and devotion that we may continually uphold the glorious heritage of freedom which has been handed down to us by sacrificial patriots. Keep us from finding our security and military strength alone, but may it rather be true of us that in God we trust. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Schilling. We would like to thank the Navy Bound Southeast and the Marine Aviation Training Support Group 2-3 Color Guard for their participation today. Additionally, we would like to thank and acknowledge Naval Air Station Pensacola, the City of Pensacola, Florida Chamber of Commerce, and the Richard M. McCool Jr. Commissioning Committee for their generosity and tremendous support. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's Company, parade, rest! Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Matt Gates. It is an incredible honor to welcome you all here to this remarkable ceremony. Whether you call Pensacola home or whether you're visiting, you know this is a special place and we are indeed doing a special thing. Uh, a, a particular welcome to our veterans, our active duty and our military connected families. You inspire the most within us because you are truly the best among us. And ladies and gentlemen, officers and crew of the USS Richard McCool, know that you are in a city that is a Navy town, one rich in naval history and a community that deeply values the service and sacrifice of our military. Today we celebrate not just the commissioning of the USS McCool, but also the spirit and dedication and bravery that it embodies. We want to thank the commissioning committee without whom Today's events and this remarkable event in Pensacola would not have occurred. And we honor the minds with the vision to craft the need for this capability that is being delivered by the McCool and indeed the hands, the, the skilled hands who crafted her and who gave her to us on this occasion. The USS McCool is named after a true American hero, Captain Richard M. McCool, Jr a Medal of Honor recipient whose courage and leadership during the Battle of Okinawa saved countless lives. His legacy is a testimony to the values we hold dear, bravery, duty, honor, and country. As we commission this state-of-the-art amphibious warship, we are reminded of the critical role it will play in our national defense and deterrence strategy, equipped with advanced radar systems, a flight deck, and a well deck all working in tandem to transport sailors and Marines ashore and into the fight wherever and whenever duty may call. USS McCool is a symbol of our commitment to maintaining the most capable, survivable, and lethal military on the planet Earth. To the crew of the USS McCool, you are the beating heart of this ship, constructed of steel, but powered by patriotism and American ingenuity. Your training, dedication, and teamwork will ensure that this ship lives up to her namesake. Remember the words of Captain McCool, fight as a unit, not as individuals. This philosophy will guide you through both challenges and triumphs ahead. And know this, Pensacola will proudly always be a part of your story. Wherever you go, whatever challenges you may face, whatever triumphs you accomplish, Pensacola will always be by your side 
in every way possible. We are so grateful to your service and your sacrifice and for all you do to keep this great nation safe. And so as you embark on this new chapter, know that you carry the hopes and prayers of a grateful nation, the respect and admiration of Northwest Florida, and the love of everyone you protect and serve. Your mission is so vital and your commitment unwavering. The foundation you set today will carry over the lifespan of this incredible ship, shaping the future of naval warfare and ensuring the safety of all Americans. Let us honor the legacy of Captain Richard M. McCool Jr. by striving for excellence in all that we do. May the USS McCool sail with strength and courage, that which is so exemplified by its namesake. And may the crew always find safe harbor. It is, it is an indescribable honor to have the Chief of Naval Operations and the Secretary of the Navy with us in Pensacola today. They are great patriots who work each and every day for the fighting men and women of our service, for their families, for our veterans, and for this great country we serve. May God bless the USS Richard M. McCool Jr. and may God grant her fair winds and flowing seas in the future. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Representative Gates. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Carrie Wilkinson. All right, good morning. good morning. All right, by a show of umbrellas, how many would like me to read every word in my speech? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do that. I am going to say, rather than uh, reading a long list of incredible people sitting on the platform here today, I will say it is an honor to be among you. Uh, so many distinguished uh, and amazing leaders and contributors out in the audience today. Thank you so much for having your shipbuilders here. Uh, with that, I have the honor of representing with probably more than is customary at a commissioning. Where are our shipbuilders? Where are you? I know there's some up here. Where are you? Thank you all for being here. Thank you for what you do. There's just a couple of uh, points I want to leave with you today, and I will turn over this microphone for those that will say many compelling things. I will say that shipbuilding is about teamwork. It is a network of people that care about the nation, and they are all over this nation and in other places. And so without that team, whether it's here on the Gulf Coast, across the country, it's shipbuilders, it's Soup Ship Gulf Coast, and all of our industry partners, uh, we are grateful to be a part of this network. Uh, we do important work. I will say we do it for some pretty compelling and special reasons. It is about the why for shipbuilders. Quick study of the mission and values for either of the services that are here today, uh, the Navy and the Marine Corps, pretty important messages there, right? Marine Corps, honor through respecting human dignity and respecting others. Courage, having the mental, moral, and physical strength to do the right thing. Commitment a spirit of determination and dedication leading to the highest order of discipline and inspiring unrelenting determination to achieve victory in every endeavor. Who on earth would not want to be a part of that? We are driven. We are driven as shipbuilders by this unique and unwavering sense of purpose. It's why Ingalls shipbuilders are at the shipyard while our communities sleep. It's why we have a deep sense of community and a language entirely unto ourselves. It's why Ingalls shipbuilders work until we can't and yet still talk about what's happening in the shipyard long after we're going into the gates every morning to build ships. On this day, I do have the privilege of representing over 11,000 extraordinary men and women at Ingalls shipbuilding. Yard life is the pursuit of the ideals that our service members embody of commitment and service and sacrifice. And in case we weren't already inspired enough by the Corps, the United States Navy seals the deal and challenges each of us to make your job one the world notices. On that culminating note, we are proud to serve the crew of Richard M. McCool Jr., LPD 29, and will always consider you family. Wherever you go, we will be with you. Our sincerest thank you as the world takes notice of your discipline, courage, readiness to execute, and steadfast commitment to our nation. Thank you all for the incredible honor of serving you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilkinson. Ladies and gentlemen, General Christopher J. Mahoney. Well, we have a saying in the Marine Corps. If it ain't raining, you ain't training. 
Mayor Reeves, uh, it's great to be back here in a place where I started my career as an aspiring naval aviator, second lieutenant with a steady paycheck. Uh, long days at Pensacola Beach, long nights, longer nights at Trader John's, at McGuire's, tossing the mullet at the Florabama. I am surprised actually that I made it out at all. And I'm truly honored to be here at this commissioning, very special for me, and to share the dais with Secretary Del Toro, the CNO, and Representative Matt Gates. We honor Richard McCool for his heroic actions, but I think there's more than just his name that's going to live in this ship. Richard McCool, by his citation, was a protector. He was, when the time comes for this ship, and it will come, this ship will be a protector. It also represents a step change in what an amphibious warship is. In this ship, you have the latest Spy 6 technology. You have the next generation surface search. This ship enables movement, maneuver, and sustainment in the littorals. She enables the projection of naval power that gives the fleet commander options, that gives decision space to the joint commanders. The ship you're looking at is at once a hotel, a restaurant, a gas station, a hospital, a marina, an armory, an airport, a sensor, and a fortress. But for all that, her most important role, the most important mission, remains transporting Marines to victory and getting them back home again. Fight as a team not as an individual. When you look, my Latin is rusty, but I think that was what the mot motto of the ship is. So here's the team as I see it. You take great American shipbuilders, you add to them the best sailors on the planet, and throw on top of that some angry Marines, and that's your team. That is Richard McCool. And when the time comes to put our boot on the throats of our enemies, the ship will lead the way. They say that a ship is a living thing. We don't refer to McCool as it or that. We say she or her, a living spirit, the spirit of protection. Richard McCool was a protector, and his spirit will live on in this ship. His spirit will protect his crew and all the Marines that sail on her. When the Marine Corps becomes a bullet to be fired by the Navy, LPD-29 and its crew will pull the trigger. God bless this ship, and God help anybody who challenges her. Thank you. Thank you, General Mahoney. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Lisa Franchetti. Well, thank you and good morning. It is really an absolute pleasure to be here with you in what is beautiful and normally sunny Pensacola, right here on the Emerald Coast, a city with a proud Navy heritage, a city that helped bring naval aviation to life and has supported our sailors for just shy of 200 years. Mayor Reeves, please accept my heartfelt thanks for this city's continued support of our Navy team and especially for its hospitality this week. How big, a big round of applause for Pensacola. <laughs> Honorable Gates, Secretary Del Toro, General Mahoney, state and local leaders, members of the commissioning committee, members of the McCool family, ladies and gentlemen, active reserve sailors and Marines, Navy civilians, and how about, wow, 400 NJROTC and Sea Cadets. Woo! And as Carrie said, most importantly, the crew and the builders of this ship. Today is a great Navy day. As General Mahoney just said, today we get to commission the Navy's newest San Antonio class amphibious transport dock our last LPD Flight 1 and bridge to our future LPD Flight 2, LPD 29, USS Richard M. McCool, Jr. In just a few minutes, McCool will officially enter our Navy's active service 
and joined the fleet with her 12 sister ships. As General Mahoney said, the LPD plays an essential role for our blue-green team as the workhorse of our amphibious fleet. And soon, McCool will set sail and begin embarking, transporting, and landing elements of our Navy Marine Corps team, executing missions like amphibious assault, special operations, expeditionary warfare, and she's gonna do that with the latest technology. All of that will bring together a quantum leap in capability to the Amphibious Readiness Group and to the Joint Force. The commissioning of this warship puts another player with more capability on the field in America's warfighting Navy, providing more options to our nation's leaders to deter and, if necessary, fight and win our nation's wars in this decade and beyond. And as you've all seen on the news, the events of this past year and the actions taken by your Navy Marine Corps team, whether it's in the Indo-Pacific, in the Mediterranean, in the Red Sea, and beyond, underscore the enduring importance of this ship and more broadly of American naval power. With an average of about 110 ships and 70,000 sailors and Marines deployed at sea on any given day, the Navy Marine Corps team is executing our mission around the world and around the clock, delivering power for peace, defending our national security interests, and in securing our nation's security and prosperity every single day. I am so proud of the amazing roster of players in America's Warfighting Navy, a roster that the McCool is about to join. There is no other Navy and Marine Corps team that operates this in this scale. No other Navy in the world can train, deploy, sustain such a lethal, globally deployed and combat credible force, able to synchronize effects in every single domain. So I wanna say thank you. Thank you to those that are gathered here today and those that you represent for working hard together to put this warship into our fleet and to drive forward with one purpose, to deliver the Navy the nation needs. I know Captain Baker, Commander Carlo, Command Master Chief Gonzalez, and the crew of Richard M. McCool are ready to take the watch, bring this ship to life, and live up to the gallantry, sacrifice, and legacy of its namesake. We're so happy to have Captain McCool's granddaughter and sponsor with McCool, Shauna, and his great-grandchildren here today. His legacy lives on in you and in this powerful worship. To the crew of the USS Richard M. McCool, Jr., you are the cornerstone of our naval power. Your ship is the best in the world with all the latest technology, but I know that it can go nowhere and do nothing without you. I ask that you be good stewards of this worship like it's your first car, because your fingerprints will forever be etched in this ship's history. Always remember to live up to your motto, to fight as a unit, not as individuals, because teamwork on this ship, on the blue-green team, and across the joint warfighting ecosystem is critical to our every success. I look forward to seeing all that you will accomplish together and to seeing you out in the fleet. Let me again say thank you to the crew of the Richard M. McCool, Jr., and thank you to all of our active and reserved sailors, Marines, and civilians all around the world for your service and your sacrifice. You make a difference every single day. And please extend my thanks to your families, your big support networks out there for their service and their sacrifice. They enable us to accomplish our mission every day. It now gives me great pleasure to welcome Secretary Del Toro, the 78th Secretary of the Navy, to offer today's principal address. Mr. Secretary. Good morning, Pensacola. Look, I extend my very first thanks to the chaplain. I woke up this morning, I called the chaplain, I said, chaps, we got a problem. I need you to keep praying for no rain. Okay, and let's admit, it was raining a little bit earlier, but keep praying, Chas, because you're doing a good job right now. 
I promise you the speeches will not get longer, though. Good morning, everyone. It is indeed an absolute honor to be here with you today. The cradle of naval aviation to commission our fleet's newest ship, the USS Richard M. McCool, Jr. The first ship, the very first ship, named in honor of Medal of Honor recipient Captain Richard M. McCool, United States Navy. Congressman Gates, thank you for your partnership and collaboration in supporting the thousands of sailors, Marines, and civilians and their families who are stationed and trained here in Pensacola. But I also thank you for your support of all our sailors and Marines who are deployed all around the world. Today, a third of our fleet is underway and over 50,000 Marines are deployed overseas. And we need the support of individuals like yourself and Congress throughout this nation to support each and every one of them in their mission. Mayor Reeves, thanks for joining us today and for your support of our service, men and women here in this great city. Admiral Frank Ketty, General Mahoney, thank you both for your presence here and for your leadership of our Marine Navy team. This warship before us represents the combined power of our two formidable naval services. And so it is fitting here today to have the leaders of both services and to welcome this great ship into our fleet and our force. To the crew of the McCool, the rest of our Navy team and our partners in industry, thank you for your unwavering support. This commissioning was made possible only by your tireless efforts. As the 78th Secretary of the Navy, my mission is simple. It's to provide combat ready forces and capabilities to the President of the United States, the Secretary of Defense, and our combatant commanders around the globe. And it is inherent within my duties as Secretary to identify and rectify delays within our shipbuilding efforts. And I thank you, Kerry, and all your shipbuilders for bringing forth this ship in schedule and within budget. I appreciate it. Last fall, I announced my vision for a new national maritime statecraft to prevail in an era of intense strategic competition. Maritime statecraft encompasses a national whole of government effort to restore the maritime capabilities of the United States. I have forcefully advocated to revive our nation's shipbuilding capabilities and its capacity. And so today, here at this commissioning, I am proud to publicly announce the Department of the Navy is pursuing the award of amphibious multi-ship procurement contract for a total of three San Antonio class amphibious ships, just like the USS Richard M. McCool, along with an America class amphibious assault ship. How about a hand of applause? <laughs> at last night's ceremony with the commanding officer, I told him I didn't bring a gift to give him there, but I wasn't telling the whole story. This is your gift, Commander. I meet often with industry leaders to discuss the challenges that prevent us from moving faster or forward in shipbuilding. They respond that fluctuations in demand make it difficult to maintain a stable production schedule. This agreement sends still yet another steady demand signal to our shipbuilding industrial base. And this agreement also demonstrates the Navy's commitment to maintaining 31 amphibious warfare ships and our prudent measures taken within taxpayer funds. I'm proud to make this announcement as we, just as the CNO says, welcome still yet another, I quote, player to the field, manned by an all-volunteer force of sailors and Marines who have dedicated their careers and their lives in service to our nation, much like this ship's namesake. Like myself and several in the audience today, Captain McCool began his naval service as a midshipman at the United States Naval Academy, though he joined in 1941 right at the outset of World War II. And there's much that will be said here today in the future about Captain McCool. But Shauna, I wanna take a moment. I asked actually to have his entry from the Lucky Bag, which is the yearbook at the Naval Academy, pulled out for me so I could see what it actually said. And of course, there was a little bit of danger there in doing that, but <laughs> I wanna read this to you, Shauna, to your entire family. It's um, Richard Miles McCool, Jr., Norman, Oklahoma. With a smile as broad and as pleasant as Oklahoma's blue sky, Mac won the hearts of his classmates. He came to us with a sheepskin from the University of Oklahoma and a great big hunk of determination in his heart. While working his way up to the very top of all extracurricular uh, attainments, the editor of the Trident, Mac participated in practically every intramural sport and did a good job in all of them. There never was a better roommate than Mac and if there ever was a finer man, I've never met him. 
What a tremendous statement to be made by still yet another midshipman, his own roommate. I think there is no surprise of what was yet to come. While his dream was to be a naval aviator shortly after his graduation from the Naval Academy in 1944, he found himself at the commanding officer of the USS LCS-122, a landing craft support ship leading 65 officers and sailors. And in the spring of 45, McCool and his crew found themselves sailing through the Pacific Theater, supporting Marines ashore during the Battle of Okinawa. LCS-122, with her sister ships, were charged with guarding the radar picket destroyers stationed off the coast of Okinawa against Japanese kamikaze attacks, armed with rocket launchers and 40-millimeter guns to repel threats from the sky. But on June 10, 1945, Kamikaze struck LCS-122 below the conning tower where then Lieutenant McCool was manning his battle station, knocking him unconscious. When he came to, he took charge of the situation, coordinating damage control efforts and the evacuation of his crew. Despite his severe wounds from the blast, including a collapsed lung, he endeavored to rescue as many of his crew as he could who were trapped blazing in blazing compartments. His actions saved the ship. LCS-122, which was returned to service after the repairs, as well as the majority of his crew. For his actions, then President Truman presented McCool with the Medal of Honor. After World War II, Captain McCool continued to serve in our Navy during the Korean and Vietnam Wars, retiring in 1974 after 30 years of honorable service as both a surface warfare officer and a public affairs officer as well. Even after his retirement from the Navy, Captain McCool continued to serve his Seattle community through volunteer work, as well as serving two terms as Kitsap County Party Chairman. And while Captain McCool is no longer with us, we take solace in knowing that he is watching over us, this next generation of Naval leaders, from his final resting place at the Naval Academy Cemetery. And that... and that his strength, his courage, his spirit lives on through his family present here today. Shauna, on behalf of this crew and our Navy, thank you for serving as ship sponsor of the USS Richard M. McCool. In this role, you will never and you will forever be the connection between this warship, her crew, and your grandfather's legacy of service. It is my hope that you will continue to share your stories and memories of your grandfather, just the good ones, with the crew, giving them a deep appreciation for the man whose name adorns these uniforms. Captain McCool's leadership in the face of grave danger and his acts of terrorism to save the crew and ship our nation entrusted to him are indeed an example for all throughout our Navy and Marine Corps. To the sailors and Marines of the McCool and your families, you are about to embark on a great adventure as you bring this ship to life. On behalf of a grateful nation, Thank you all for your work and sacrifices that you have already made and for everything that you will do in the coming days as you work towards your maiden deployment. May God continue to watch over the ship, her crew, and grant them always with fair winds and following seas wherever they may sail. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for this great privilege. Thank you, Secretary Del Toro. Sir, I'd be honored if you now place Richard M. McCool, Jr. in commission. Captain, place Richard M. McCool in commission, sir. Aye, sir. <laughs> On behalf of the President of the United States and for the Secretary of the Navy, I hereby place United States ship Richard M. McCool, Jr. in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who shall sail in her. <laughs> Executive officer, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, sir. Ship's company, hut ten, hut. The commission pennant in professional national navies began to take form late in the 17th century. All ships at that time were sailing ships, and it was often difficult to tell a naval ship 
from a merchantman. Navies began to adopt long, narrow pennants to be flown by their ships at the main masthead to distinguish themselves from merchant ships. The commissioned pennant will fly continuously until the ship is decommissioned. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the ship's mast as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the colors and commission pennant are flying proudly over USS Richard M. McCool, Jr. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders. From Commander Naval Military Personnel Command to Captain Jeffrey Baker, United States Navy. Subject, Bupler's Order Number 9580 of 1 April 2023. When directed by reporting senior, detach from president duty and report to pre-commissioning unit Richard M. McCool, Jr. as commanding officer. Upon commissioning of USS Richard M. McCool, Jr., report for duty as commanding officer. Admiral Franchetti, United States ship Richard M. McCool, Jr. is in commission and I am in command. Executive officer, set to watch. Aye, sir. <laughs> officer of the deck, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative, and while on watch, is responsible for the safe operation of the ship and crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. We are honored to have Commander Larry Friese, United States Navy retired, a United States Marine Corps Vietnam veteran, and former prisoner of war with us today. He will pass the long glass to our commanding officer, and his nephew, Captain Jeffrey Baker. First officer of the deck is Chief Boson Mate Stephen Bailey from Manchester, Jamaica. The Petty Officer of the Watch is Cryptologic Technician Maintenance First Class Sean Forschler from Elk Grove, California. The Messenger of the Watch is Information Systems Technician Third Class Alexa Ballinger from Orlando, Florida. And the Boson Mate of the Watch is Senior Chief Boson Mate David Beckendorf from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Now, set the watch. On deck, section one. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. Watch. 
Captain, the watch is set. Very well. The spirit of a U.S. Navy warship is the embodiment of her sponsors. Richard M. McCool Jr. is blessed to have two sponsors, Ms. Shauna McCool and Ms. Kate Oha. Granddaughters of our ship's namesake, Sean and Kate christened this ship in Pascagoula, Mississippi on June 11, 2022, and they imbued this ship and crew with their charm and grace. Unfortunately, Kate is unable to join us here today, but we recognize her commitment to our ship. Shauna, I would be honored if you would give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Secretary Del Toro, Admiral Frank Hetty, ladies and gentlemen, please indulge me. Because when I think of my grandfather and his courage under fire, the only way I can describe him is to simply say, Grandpa was a badass. <laughs> Brew, can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah. Officers and crew of USS Richard M. McCool Jr., man our ship and bring her to life.
Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of USS Richard M. McCool Jr. salutes you. We are proud to serve in America's Navy. Richard M. McCool Jr., ready? Two. Will the guests please be seated? Captain, USS Richard M. McCool, Jr. is manned and ready. Very well. Commodore Carmichael, USS Richard M. McCool, Jr. is manned and ready and reports for duty, sir. Very well. Secretary Del Toro, request permission to break your flag, sir. Permission to break my flag, Captain. Aye, sir. Executive officer, break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. Aye, sir. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. Aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the Secretary of the Navy is flying proudly over USS Richard M. McCool, Jr. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Jeffrey Baker, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS Richard M. McCool, Jr. Ship's Company, Parade, Rest, Representative Gates, Secretary Del Toro, Admiral Franchetti, General Mahoney, Admiral Quinn, Captain Shishasti, Shishati, Commander Freese, and Shauna. And, and in the interest of time, everyone on this stage, uh, thank you for everything you contributed to bringing USS Richard M. McCool Jr. to life. I'm honored to stand here today as her first commanding officer. I want to start by thanking my family and friends who are here today and those that could not attend, and the family and friends of my crew. Because of all your sacrifices and support over the last seven to eight months of separation as the crew moved to Pascagoula, Mississippi, we could do what we had to do to sail Maku on 22 August and bring her here today. I want to thank Admiral Quinn and the Pensacola Navy League, the Commissioning Committee, the Chamber of Commerce, certainly Naval Air Village and Naval Air Station Pensacola, Alicia, Dave, Debbie, the Mayor, many others, and really the entire Pascagoula community excuse me, Pensacola community. <laughs> a lot of peas this, this, this last year. Uh, writ large for hosting us this week and providing my crew with the memory of a lifetime. Not every decision a commanding officer makes is a correct one. Certainly bringing this ship and my crew to Pensacola was without doubt the best decision I could have made. I want to thank Sean and Kate for their contribution to our ship and my crew. Since the christening in June of 22, you have partnered with me to instill your grandfather's legacy into the fabric of LPD 29. Sean, you're far more than just our sponsor. You and your family have become personal and lifelong friends, and I love you all. I look forward to celebrating the next three to four decades of this ship's successes. And I want to right now, I want to thank those who I continue to believe do not get thanked enough. The patriotic American shipbuilders of Huntington Angles on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. The electricians, machinists, welders, pipe fitters, painters, riggers, and many other trades who, who sweated through five Mississippi summers to build the most advanced amphibious warship in the world. I thank you, my crew thanks you, the Navy thanks you, and the entire country owes you a debt of thanks. And 
And I, I can't personally thank all those who worked on our behalf. I, I, would, I would be remiss not to mention those who helped and supported me every day really over the last 18 months. Ken White, Missy Bowman, Leanne King, Janet Mann, Chris Salisville, and my PMR, Captain Select, Kip Wilkins. They were, they were my personal support system. Sometimes my camp counselor. The other days just to shrink. Uh, <laughs> but I'm personally indebted to each of them. I want to speak about the legacy of Captain McCool and how it's embedded into this ship. Sean, when we first met at the christening, you spoke profoundly about your grandfather and how his legacy, how his legacy was far more than two heroic, heroic days in Okinawa in June of 45. He served in three wars. He served his country and his community after retirement for the rest of his life. His legacy was about service to a cause greater than himself, whether in uniform or as a civilian. How he's a son, brother, father, and grandfather. My crew has embraced his legacy of service with humility. We admire his courage, his strength, and we share his love of country. We work every day to make him proud, Sean. Our two seven-meter boats are call signs to Declan and to Parker after his great-grandkids. Our mess decks, known as Elaine's Eatery, to honor his wife and your grandmother. Our call sign, Hummel Sooner, to honor his Oklahoma roots and his character. And our ship's motto, who you've heard many times, fine as a unit, not as individuals, his personal words and his statement to President Truman when he was awarded his Medal of Honor. I hope that we've made him proud. And I hope that we have lived up to and will continue to honor his legacy. The remarkable warship moored behind me right now, it sits idle, it's tied to this pier. It's ready for pictures, but it's full of potential energy. But it takes 330 Officers, chief petty officers, list the crew to sail her and make her a warship ready for tasking. Manning these rails are the finest men and women this country has to offer. They're prepared to do whatever our country has asked us to do, and they're ready to go today. I couldn't be prouder of every one of them. The ship needs them all. I need them all. The Navy and our country need them all. Please thank them. They got to watch. LPD-29, Richard McCool, when deployed, comes equipped with the most advanced weapon system ever produced. It's a weapon system not limited in reach, lethality, or combat effectiveness. The only weapon system known to mankind that cannot be defeated by an adversary anywhere in the world. The weapon system is the United States Marine Corps. They're represented here today. There are 75 young Marines manning the rails of this ship. If you count the four of that amazing color guard, 79 Marines standing side by side with my sailors. If you notice, they were standing in ranks that were not separated by uniform. They stood side by side, symbolic of the blue-green team, symbolic of a one team ready to answer the call, bonded by the American flag we wear on our uniforms. It's a bond that cannot be broken, and symbolic of what I'm certain Captain McCool would have wanted on board his ship. So General Mahoney, sir, I'm gonna close with this, with a message to you, sir. A few months ago, Lieutenant General Heckle and Lieutenant General Austin asked me some questions as they were taking their tour. They asked about my crew and I told them we were getting ready to commit a hostile takeover and get the shipyard off so we could get on and get this ship ready to go to sea. And I told them, I told them, General, that when this ship sailed, she'd be ready to fight. And I tell you today, sir, with conviction, that McCool is ready to take your Marines to the fight. I need five days to sail to Onslow Bay. <laughs> five and a half if you want me to go Moorhead City. I need 500 Marines, because I can take 500, and all their equipment, and I know they don't pack light, I know the Marine Corps is light and agile, but they're really not. <laughs> But we're standing by to go anywhere in this world to defend our country's enduring vital interests. I might need a couple waivers from the C, but CNO's right here, General, so we, because we are new. But give us a call, sir. McCool, we'll get your brains ready. We'll get them where they need to go, and we'll get them home. Godspeed, McCool. It's time to go fight and win. Thank you.
Will the guests please remain standing for the benediction that will be offered by Chaplain Schilling. Ship's Company, Hudson, Hut. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, bless the officers and crew of this ship, giving us fidelity in all our tasks. Create and maintain among us cheerfulness, camaraderie, and the will to fight as a unit and not as individuals. Watch over our families and keep them during our days of separation. Grant fair weather in all our voyages, if it be your holy will. But if not, O Lord, be our strong shield in danger's hour. Preserve us from the dangers of the sea and the violence of the enemy. Whether on duty or off, cause us to exemplify our core values of honor, courage, and commitment, that we may always represent this ship and our country well. Show us your favor, O God, and hear our prayer. Amen.